so we're getting some more power. Now, of course, um, now that we have a bit of space inside the reactor, um, the reactor turns off automatically if uh, the shell is broken, we can see now that we've actually got a bit of space to put some stuff. Now, first of all, we'll have a look at what a graphite block does. A graphite block simply increases the amount of power that the thing produces, and every single graphite block increases the power produced by 4 RF per tick, but also increases the heat per tick um, as well. It changes for different amounts of fuels. For thorium, it increases it by 8, and say for uranium, it will increase it by, say, about 32, and for the plutonium fuels, it will maybe increase it by 64, but also the power it gives is going to be larger and larger as well. So it, the amount of heat it gives changes depending on how powerful the fuel is, and same for the RF per tick as well. So every uh, graphite block is going to increase heat and power. So if you want a very efficient reactor, you want to put a lot of graphite blocks in there, but you're going to have to counteract it with some water or some uh, reactor cooler. So as we can see, because uh, flowing water also counts as a block in the reactor, um, we can see here, I, I'm, I'm going to just trap this water between these two graphite bars, so we'll just compare it. So at the moment we've got 328 RF per tick, 24 heat per tick. If we add a single water bucket here in the reactor, which acts as a coolant, we can now see that it produces 16 heat per tick instead. So it's actually gone down a little bit. So it's gone from 16, it's gone from 24 down to 16. So it seems to reduce the heat by 8. That's good. Uh, the best thing to use, of course, though, is if we have a bunch, say, in here of uh, graphite blocks, you can see we're producing 40 heat per tick. Let's see how much the reactor, one reactor cooler block uh, puts it down by. It puts it down by 32, from 40 to 8. That's pretty good. So uh, a mixture of graphite blocks and reactor cooler uh, allows you to create the most efficient reactor. And depending on the size of the reactor and the fuel you're using, you're going to need different amounts of uh, uh, cooler and graphite blocks to um, make your reactor as efficient as possible. Of course, these things are a little bit expensive, so you also need to uh, make sure you have the materials to make these as well. Um, now let's look at the other types of fuels. Uh, let's break this and uh, let's get back to that, uh, that thing. So the reactor upgrade again. I don't know where that went. That went somewhere. Uh, so the reactor upgrade uh, back in there, and we've got a three by three by three reactor again. So now let's look at some of the uh, uranium cells. Now the uranium uh, sort of tree is a lot different. There's a huge number of uranium cells. Now the first thing I want to look at actually is that once a TBU fuel cell is used up. Uh, then it will actually go to a depleted TBU fuel cell, which can be used. Did you hear that? There uh, can be used to make thorium-232, which doesn't really have much use in the mod at the moment. Uh, well, actually, maybe it does. It has a use later on, um, possibly. Oh no, thorium-232 is the is the one that's useful. Uh, thorium-230 has doesn't have a use until a bit later. Um, but that can also be used to make uranium-233, which is the other type of uranium. Uh, uh, fuel that can be made. It's a little bit more efficient than uranium-235. So here we go. LU-235 fuel cells are the simplest uh, uranium cells. It just requires 8 uranium-238 and 1 uranium-235. And the way you get those two things are through um, separating... Uh, let's have a look. Two ways you get that are through separating uh, uranium dust or uranium ingots, you get three of each. Uh, sorry, you get three tiny uranium-235 and three uranium-238 per ingot or dust. So you can either go for the, um, you can stock up on 235 and get a, a high uh, energy uranium-235 fuel cell, or highly enriched, I think it stands for, I haven't used these for a long time, uh, or low, low enriched uranium-235 fuel cell, um, LEU. So you can just put these into a cell. Empty cells are a lot cheaper now. Uh, so you can get 64 of them from four iron platings. You get 32 of them from 17 iron. So they're very, very cheap, the cells. And the reason they're cheap is because they're just used up. They're, they're disposable. They're like plastic bottles. Um, you just stick the uranium in, toss it in the reactor, and off it goes. Um, so yeah, uh, the LEU-235 fuel cell um, creates 600 RF per tick, so it's a lot more powerful. But the lifetime's a lot shorter, and it creates more heat. It creates roughly the same amount of energy overall, though. Um, again, multiply for the different stages of reactor. So we expect it here to make 1,200 RF per tick. Again, it's overpowered. I think it's definitely nerfed in later versions. Um, so here we go. This should create 1,200 RF per tick, and it does, which is great. 
So there we go, off it goes. Um, you will also see um, if we put the HEU fuel cell in, that this thing will create um, a base of 2700, which has been multiplied by two, but you can actually see now that the heat is rising quite a lot, so we have to be careful here. And again, you know, we have to add a lot of coolant cells, and we're getting to the stage now where um, we don't actually have enough space to deal with the really high energy fuels that we're using. Um, so that actually should be maybe enough. Minus 16, so, so we're definitely in the in the blue zone again. We're, we're, we're losing heat, so that's the safe reactor now, creating a good amount of, uh, of power. So that's pretty much, um, it's pretty much the uranium system. The uranium system goes on, and you can then start creating some plutonium fuels. Um, again, the reactor upgrades just increase and increase. You can then go to a 5x5 five five reactor and a 7x7. And seven seven. It goes all the way up to a 17x17x17, 17 by 17 by 17, and once you're at that stage, you can create some serious amount of power, but it's also extremely expensive. So you need to decide what sort of size reactor you want, but also, um, you know, type of fuels you want to type of fuels you want to use. You might even consider running lots of small reactors to sort of breed out the uh, more efficient fuels, such as plutonium, um, which create a lot more power. So uh, let's stick with the sort of three by three by three reactor. Um, let's get some Kater reactor upgrades again, uh, because for some reason I got rid of all of them. Um, cell forty-seven. Okay, so uh, the next thing we want to look at maybe is um, Plutonium. Uh, so the first plutonium cell is a MOX cell. So the MOX uh, 239 cell is the most basic. Uh, the recipe for this is uranium 238 and plutonium 239. So the recipe for plutonium 239 is from that plutonium ore or uh, from uh, thermal centrifuging depleted cells. So the depleted cells you get plutonium 239 from, uh, well, at least uh, at the stage that you are in the um, sort of tree are LU233 fuel cells, which you can actually get from the thorium, so you can actually get plutonium out of that from thorium. Um, you can also get it from other MOX cells, um, and you can also get it from depleted LEU235 cells. So not too hard to get, but you get it in very small quantities. Uh, but eventually you should be able to build yourself up to a MOX cell. And a MOX cell uh, effectively is the middle point between plutonium and uranium fuel. Um, you'll see here that it creates 900 RF per tick, has a shorter lifetime and more heat, uh, and the, the base energy is a little bit better. So it's a better fuel overall, but it's just a, it just used up a little bit quicker. So there's a MOX cell. Uh, this then uh, can be uh, used up in the fission reactor to form depleted MOX cells. And these are very useful because it gets your hands on some plutonium-241. You can start building up plutonium-241, make some plutonium-241 clumps, and this is where it gets pretty exciting. Um, you can see uh, here that we're going to have a look at the nuke later on in later in the later versions when, it's, when it comes out. Uh, you can make MOX241 cells, which are a little bit more efficient. Um, and then you can also make, uh, more importantly, LEP241, and even more importantly, HEP241. HEP241 cells create a huge amount of heat, um, as you will see here. Uh, they create 840 base heat per tick, but they create a huge amount of energy per tick. The lifetime is very short, though, uh, and their base total energy is very high as well. So they're just very quick, uh, very, very volatile fuels that create a huge amount of energy. And you need um, probably a 5x5x5 five by five by five reactor to cope with the amount of heat this produces because you're going to need enough coolant cells to keep, that, uh, keep your reactor from being safe. I don't believe that a 3x3x3 three by three by three is big enough to cope with the um, HEP uh, fuels. But once this has been used up, which is sort of what you want to get going, um, you can use uh, you get your depleted cells, and effectively this is very useful because uh, you can then start getting your hands on basically the most important, or at least the sort of rarest um, isotope of plutonium, plutonium-238. You also get a bunch of 242, which can be used to make more plutonium cells. So plutonium-238 is used probably to make um, one of the nice things that you can get at the end of using fission reactors quite a lot. Um, it can be used to make um, RTG cells. An RTG cell is pretty much a piece of plutonium-238, uh, some basic plating and some iron plating. This can be used uh, in the heavy-duty workspace with some more reinforced plating, and you get yourself an RTG, a radioisotope thermoelectric generator. And this thing can be used uh, effectively as a solar panel. Um, it produces 100 RF per tick, a constant stream of 100 RF per tick, um, as we will see uh, here. It just produces a constant stream of 100 RF per tick. 
and it just sits there and you get power from the heat generated by the decay of the plutonium. That's pretty much how RTG cells work. So at the end of uh, using a lot of these uh, more volatile, more dangerous fuels, building yourself big enough reactors to cope with them, uh, at the end of the day you can actually start building yourself um, a lot of radioisotope thermoelectric generators and the sort of aim, I guess, is to move from the sort of non-renewable energy of fission reactors into the renewable energy of radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs. Um, so you can actually get yourself quite a lot of these. Um, once you get four or five, you're then producing quite a lot of energy actually. Um, but do keep in mind that these are very hard to get because plutonium 238 is so hard to come by. I mean, the number of iterations of fuel you have to go through to get these things um, is pretty pretty big. Um, now, this doesn't actually come out until a later version, I think 1.1 or 0.0.1.1. So this is sort of a, a sneak peek at a later version. But if you have the mod already, you'll know these exist. Um, so this is sort of the the thing that was um, always meant to be the renewable energy source at the end of uh, using fission reactors. So there we go, that's pretty much uh, fission reactors. Uh, they're totally overhauled from the, the, the first version they were released. Um, there was also a couple of decorative blocks such as the tubing. Um, what else happened? I'm just looking at my change log over here. There's a few bug fixes. Oh, the 32 times textures came in for the first time. Uh, so you can see all of these new textures for the cells and for the machines, the dusts and things. They came in um, in version uh, 1.0. At 0.0.9. Uh, what else happens? Bug fixes. Uh, added a the config to change efficiencies of the fission reactor and change efficiency of other things. Oh my god, my dog. He's barking. But yeah, there we go. That's pretty much it. We'll see you in the next version. 1.0.0.0. Uh, We're finally into the ones and we'll have a look at that next time. Thanks for watching.